Hey everybody, it's Charles from HumbleMechanic.com and today we are going to be replacing all of the bushings in the pendulum mount on the R32. The pendulum mount, or what most people call it is the dog bone mount, attaches to the subframe and the transmission on the R32. Today we're going to be taking out the old bushings and installing some new polyurethane bushings. One quick note, something that I didn't do on this job, you really do want to consider replacing the bolts that hold this pendulum mount into the car. Because I'm taking the subframe out a few more times, I didn't do that, but it is recommended that you do, and you can get all four of them for about $9. I'll be sure to put a link to the bushings, the bolts, and some recommended tools that you may need for this job in the description. In addition to some basic hand tools, I also rented a U-joint press from the local auto parts store. In addition to that, I used a wheel bearing press kit to make this job a lot easier. Renting or borrowing the U-joint press tool is free, and the wheel bearing kit was about $70. There are ways to do this job without these tools, but this does make it quite a bit easier. Once we have the car up in the air, we'll start by removing this dog bone mount. That's two 13 millimeter bolts at the back, two 16 millimeters here, attached to the transmission. And it comes right out. Now that we have the dog bone mount out, it's time to get some new bushings in it. We're going to start with the back bushings. First, we're going to need to remove this bolt that holds all the pieces together. This is a 16 millimeter head bolt, so we'll take it out and set it to the side. A quick note on the end nut piece. It does have to go in a certain way. There's a flat portion that needs to face out away from the dog bone in order for it to line up. Next, we're going to remove the outer bushing and the cup piece. This is done by simply walking the cup piece back and forth until it slides off. If you need to spray a little bit of lubricant in there, go ahead, but I didn't have to. And finally, just simply pull the other bushing off. You can see here it was significantly worn, so this will be a great upgrade for the car. Next, what we want to do is clean this mount and get all of this old bushing material out. You can use something like a Scotch-Brite pad and clean it by hand, or what I found works really, really well in this application is a wire wheel. And we want to get as much of that bushing off of the mount as we possibly can. If there's a part where you can't get a wire wheel into, a little bit of brake clean and a pick or a pocket screwdriver will get the remaining bushing material out. We also want to apply the same technique and clean the cup piece as well as the end bracket. Once everything is clean, it's time to install our bushings. Before you put the bushing in, be sure to put plenty of lubricant on the bushing. We want to put the lubricant that came with our PowerFlex bushings on any part that metal touches. Next, we're going to slide our bushing on, making sure that the rounded edge faces out. Go ahead and install the cup. You can even put a little lubricant on the cup piece if you'd like. Lubricate the other bushing and slide it into the cup. You'll notice there's two grooves inside the bushing. We want to make sure that those face out. Next, we're going to install the end cap and the bolt. Be sure, again, this nut is facing the correct direction. This flat piece needs to be facing up when you install it. If you don't have the flat section facing away from the dog bone, it will not line up with the bolt no matter how much you struggle with it. Go ahead and install the bolt and the bracket. You may need to squeeze it a little bit just to get the bolt to bite onto the nut. If you're having trouble lining up the nut, just get a pick or a pocket screwdriver and lift up on it a bit, and that'll help line it up with the bolt. Go ahead and tighten down that bolt. If you're having trouble with the end bracket slipping, grab a big pair of pliers and hold it while you tighten the bolt down. And I torqued this bolt to 20 Newton meters. That's it for the rear section. If you're not gonna do the front, go ahead and skip to the install portion. We're gonna move to the front of the dog bone and install the new bushing there. The small round front bushing is a little bit trickier than the one we just finished. If you have the ability to secure the dog bone either in a vise or like I have secured to my cart, that is going to make your life so much easier. Also, it's nice because this one comes with instructions that'll walk you through exactly how to do it. First thing we need to do is we need to remove this black bracket from the mount. You can pry it if you'd like, but we're gonna go ahead and drill it out because we need to open up the hole of the black bracket a little bit anyway. We do wanna be careful not to make this hole too big or it won't fit in our new sleeve. In a perfect world, you would use a 15 millimeter drill bit and drill that out. But I don't have a 15 millimeter drill bit so we're going to use this stepped drill bit in order to get it out once you've opened it up a little bit go ahead and press down on it and the bracket will come off and if you need to drill that hole out a little bit more so it's 15 millimeters go ahead and do it i found that i actually didn't need to drill it out it fit in the new sleeve just fine next it is time to press our bushing out 
we're going to be using the U-joint tool that we borrowed from the auto parts store. We'll set it down on the cart. Next, we'll set the holding plate down. Then the receiving cup. This is what our bushing is going to be pressed into. Next, we'll set the dog bone mount on top of the receiving cup, making sure that it's centered. I also have a little support at the back to make sure that the dog bone is as level as possible. Once we're sure that our bushing is directly over the receiving cup, we'll go ahead and run this threaded portion of the tool down until it touches the bushing and adjust as needed. Once that's set, we can go ahead and just press the bushing out. Even though that old bushing really wasn't all that bad, I'm gonna go ahead and replace it anyway with this polyurethane bushing. Before you install the bushing, clean the dog bone mount to get rid of any dirt, debris, or old material left in it. Next, we're gonna lubricate the mount. In addition to lubricating where the bushing goes through the dog bone, you wanna lubricate the top and bottom. Look at anywhere the bushing is going to touch metal and that's where your lubricant goes. Also, the top part of the hole the bushing came out of has a slight bevel to it. This is the portion that would be facing the transmission. We wanna press our new bushing from that side down. That is going to make doing the new bushing a lot easier. I found that if you had a vise to hold the dog bone mount, you could really use this U-joint tool and it would work very well. Unfortunately, I didn't have a way to hold all of the pieces together very easily and the bushing just kept walking around on me. So what I did was I used the other tool that I have, it's for doing wheel bearings, but it also does work great for bushings. If you wanted to buy one of these tools, it's about 70 bucks on Amazon. I'll throw a link down in the description, you can check it out. When pressing our bushing in, the trick is to apply even pressure. And the nice thing is the bolt from this kit holds the bushing centered. Once you have your jig set up, slowly press the bushing in, keeping an eye on it to make sure that it doesn't tear. Once you're about halfway, go ahead and remove the tool so that we can press the bushing all the way down. And I was able to press that the rest of the way in by hand. Give it a quick look and make sure that your bushing is installed properly all the way around on both sides. Next, we need to install our center sleeve. Go ahead and lubricate it. Be sure the edge with the lip faces down or away from the transmission or towards the ground because this is where we're gonna install our black bracket. Next, go ahead and set the black bracket on the bushing. You may need to open up the hole a bit. Again, that's gonna be a 15 millimeter hole. It should be a snug fit and we'll make any clocking adjustments when we have it on the car. When we move to the car, I like to start with the bolts at the back of the dog bone that go into the subframe. We'll go ahead and get those snug down. Now the instructions do call for installing this washer on the top side of the dog bone between the mount and the transmission. To me, it felt like the bolt was a little bit too short to do that, so I left it out. You'll have to use your own judgment on that, whether you install it or not. If in the future we need to, we can always go back and install it. When you're installing the bolts for the transmission, you may need some help with a pry bar to persuade the engine back and forth in order to get both bolts lined up. For me, I like to start with the longer bolt, the one that goes through the bushing. I think that's a little easier to start. And then go ahead and put the shorter one in. Go ahead and snug them down, and then we're gonna go back and torque all of our bolts. The bolts that go into the subframe are torqued to 25 newton meters. The bolts that go in the transmission are torqued to 50 newton meters. After that, if we had a belly pan on, we put the belly pan back on, and now it's time to take her for a drive. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. Questions, comments, you know what to do. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. I'll put links in the description to everything we use today, as well as some basic hand tools if you need a recommendation there. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course on Snapchat. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Good luck with your dog bone bushing repair, and I will see you next time.